In 2010, IBM conducted a global study of 1,500 corporate and public sector leaders across 60 nations and 33 industries. Creativity was identified as the most important leadership quality for success in business and success in navigating an increasingly complex world, outweighing even integrity and global thinking. Five years on, the perception that creativity is only possible if you are a creative person or artist is being seriously and rightfully challenged. Why then is creativity so important? Our next speaker will share her observations on how creativity of thinking is a skill and mindset that will be critical for any individual to, to develop, to be successful both in the workplace and the world of the future. Associate Professor Jean Moyle has worked across a dynamic mix of fields, including the performing arts, elite sport and the corporate sectors. A graduate from the Australian Ballet School and having danced with the Australian Ballet Dancers Company and Queensland Ballet, Jean pursued further studies in psychology, completing university degrees including a master's and doctorate in sport and ed exercise psychology. She has significant experience in working with and leading multidisciplinary teams within high performance settings and possesses specific expertise in the area of career development and transition. Let's hear from Jean Moyle on creativity. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I, I feel very fortunate in that I feel like every presenter so far has pretty much um, answered my question for me today. Is creativity the answer? So, um, Michael, one, I might have to borrow your slides for my recruitment drives in that, you know, QT dance, come to, come to QT Creative Industries, become a choreographer, um, come to QT Education or Health and you've got a job um, when everybody else turns into robots. So thank you very much. Michael, number two, looked at creativity in the concept of the digital economy and a mindset. And, and that's what very much that I've, I've uh, seen in the different fields that I've worked in, that it's creativity of thinking um, that actually impacts upon performance and people reaching the goals that they actually need. And Martin, of course, um, talking about the world in which we live, the change in resilience and self-awareness, which is critical when you're thinking about creativity and that without that actually and that awareness you know, of who you are and what you do and what you can bring. Um, you, you're not as, I've seen, as successful as you could be. And of course, Andrea as well, looking at how we actually move into a changing world, a changing workforce, um, and being creative potentially in an online sense rather than what we might traditionally see. So in the brief time we have today, exploring is creativity the answer? Uh, so given that I do come from a dance background and a few people in the room have already identified that they enjoy dancing and it's that time of the day, I'm going to invite you please to all stand up for a second. Don't worry, I'm not going to be too scary. I'm going to invite you to just turn to the person next to you and demonstrate your opportunity of how you could, yes, everyone up unless you have access issues. How could you demonstrate that uh, job of choreographing a movement, thinking of a word that's coming to mind in all of the presentations today that summarises what your thoughts are and create a gesture, and not a rude gesture, please, but create a gesture that will explain to the other person maybe what you're experiencing or feeling right at this point in time. No more instructions than that? <laughs> Turning to the person? And, and you can move. Everyone, you can move, not just hand gestures. Be creative. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I'm seeing a few, a few interesting, uh, no movement at all. Have you moved already? Excellent, okay, great. And we have some actual dancing up the front here. Thank you very much, which is fabulous. We'll, we'll come back to you later, you two. Thank you very much. Please invite you to sit down. What's always interesting about whether you get people to, you know, draw the person sitting next to you in 30 seconds or get them to do something that they might not perceive that they can actually do is that there's always a lot of laughter and there's always a lot of energy that goes on and it gets people interacting with each other. Um, and what one of the things that... Um, I wanted to cover today was actually myth busting what we perceive or define creativity to be. In that I would argue that all of you in this room are creative. 
and that have demonstrated creativity of thinking in something that you've actually done. One of the key things you come up against a lot is that creativity is artistry. That's actually not correct. Whilst we might use art to be creative as one means, I've seen and known creative artists, musicians, or even dancers, choreographers, um, that are some of the most uncreative people I've ever known. Do they follow instruction exceptionally well? Yes. Do they follow a linear thinking pattern? Are they disciplined in what they do? Yes. Are they necessarily creative? No. Uh, in working in the corporate sector and uh, within a lot of uh, blue collar mining and resource companies, what I've actually found fascinating is that if you do create the space for people to be creative, they are and they enjoy it. It's just making it okay that they understand that, no, I don't have to be a dancer, a singer, an artist to be creative. There's creativity in any role because what we're thinking about is creativity of thinking. That creativity is a talent. No, it's not a talent. It's actually a skill and skills can be developed. So it is thinking of creativity as something that I can develop, learn further, practice. And that's where I'll come back to the creative arts in one way, in, in that we are disciplined in creative practice and processes to assist us to be as creative as possible. Another myth-busting activity is that creative, creativity is about your right brain, that we divide our brain into this right brain, left brain. Now there is you know, evidence in terms of different functions and we don't have the time to go into the, the neuroscience of this. Different functions sit in different, um, or they don't sit in particular areas, but they interact in different ways. But that actually creativity of thinking is a whole brain activity that it's not just I might be more right brain versus left brain. It's a nice analogy that assists us to kind of understand what those different functions are, but it's not the actual scientific truth. So just to put that out there. What we have up in the right hand corner is looking at if you were to, to describe knowledge and experience as the difference between we've got dots of knowledge, so to speak, but our experience connects that and it's the connections that are really critical when we're thinking about creativity, which is exactly what Steve Jobs said. He said that creativity is just connecting things. When you ask creative people how they did something, they feel a little guilty because they didn't really do it. They just saw something or felt it. That we're looking at finding those connections. Hands up in the room who seen or read the books Divergent. Yeah, look, okay, for those that haven't, the new movie Insurgents coming out, have a look, uh, have a watch, it's great. So when we think about creativity, we often sometimes too talk about divergent and convergent thinking and that um, people who are creative utilise both. It's just that with divergent thinking, it's that opportunity to free our brains of the way in which we have to think a particular way or do something in a certain fashion, that we're looking uh, for novel or different ways of making those connections. So we come up also about creativity and innovation. And it was interesting working um, in the learning and development leadership sector for a long time. Um, innovation was that, that key kind of word. And then it's starting to shift as we see to creativity. And up here, the difference between the two. That Edward de Bono, very famous guy for those that don't know him in the room um, that uh, talked about the uh, amongst a whole range of things, uh, the, six, the six different coloured hats. Google that and have a look. He actually said that creativity is problem solving with relevance and novelty as in newness. It's not just about being different. So there's actually, when we think about defining creativity, it's about unleashing the potential of the mind to conceive new ideas. So when I talked about creative habit or process, it's how do we establish a way in which to prompt our brain to think in a different way, to come up with a different idea, to make different connections than what, might be, what we might habitually just automatically think in the first instance. Versus innovation is the implementation or creation of something new that has realised values to others. So a nice description between the two is, is we can brainstorm a whole range of great ideas and that's one type of process to come up with different ideas. 
But if those ideas are left on the page and not actually taken a step further and, and something is done with them, then they're just ideas. That's not innovation. Why is creativity important? So we actually have heard a bit about this today in that our 21st century challenges, the, we're dealing with change. Our brain, you know, um, whilst the, the neuroscience proves that we have the ability to change our brains in terms of neuroplasticity, actually we like to be a little bit like creatures of habit and we're having to actually force ourselves to think beyond the habits of thinking that we create or the habits of doing. And so within the world at large, creativity of thinking is going to be critical. And we've seen and heard that already today about, you know, preparing for, for those of you still at school, jobs that don't necessarily even exist yet. I love the Zumba instructor. It's like, that's awesome. <laughs> no one knew what Zumba was a number of years ago. It didn't even exist. That's somebody thinking creatively and taking Latin dance and putting it in a context that everyone can actually do in an environment that doesn't require you to dance with a partner. It's, there's a Latin dance theme to it, yet linking into the health sector and getting people moving, which addresses a lot of our health issues that are coming, becoming more and more complex in, in the world of today. As per the IBM quote that Daniel mentioned earlier, is that creativity, and in that context I'm talking about creativity of thinking, is seen as one of the most vital skills, mindsets that we can actually develop to be successful regardless of what we actually do. So in briefly talking about and stealing from creative arts, so having been a ballet dancer, then moving over to the social science and the science perspective over here, right brain to left brain if we want to categorise it that way, um, is, is linking and understanding that when... I've observed people, or what we call, you know, creatives, being creative. They actually form a particular habit. They practice an experiment with preparation to get them in the best state of mind, to perform at their peak, if I'm using sports psychology terminology, to actually expand and be provoked or prompted to consider or connect things in a way that they haven't before. And those are just two books that are out at the moment that are really fantastic, easy reads. One's Steal Like an Artist, and there's a follow-up book to that. It's really great um, examples of how am I looking at what artists do? How do I take that type of approach and I use it for myself in the situations that I'm actually doing? And the bottom one, Twyla Tharp, very famous um, choreographer, a dance choreographer, that talks through her creative habit of process and what she needs to do to be able to create a new work. Within this and wrapped into those books as examples, there's many more out there, but certainly these two really helpful and being very straight to the point, um, focusing upon pu pulling from kind of creative arts, but you know, inputting into you know, any domain that you use and having read through all of those, understanding that creativity of thinking in that skill development, it takes practice. When I work with... Um, elite performing artists, Olympic um, athletes. When we talk about psychological skills, it's about skill development, that you need to practice and experiment with it, that it's just not automatically going to happen overnight. And certainly some of those self-beliefs that you might have a frame about yourself that says, I'm not a creative person. That's like when anybody says to me, oh, I don't dance. I challenge you to that any day of the week, or oh, I'm not a dancer. I think everybody can dance. The variation of how well they do it might be different, but the most important thing that they enjoy it. Same kind of thing here with creativity, that you could sit there and if I ask you a range of questions, each one of you, I could actually pull out and I could say, you know what, you have demonstrated creativity of thinking, you are creative. And it's about developing that skill further. In looking at this, pre-performance routines is again something that um, we focus a lot on, uh, particularly in um, performance psychology and certainly in working with um, uh, you know, elite athletes or performers, but uh, that pre-performance routine can be something not just in the hour before you're about to perform, but the day, the week, the month and even years when we're talking about the Olympics. And what was interesting when I was considering this from the different lens 
um, that I, I guess the different hats that I wear, so to speak, is that pre-performance routine is no different to creating your own creative habit. It's establishing a way in which you find helpful to put yourself in a position to be able to make those connections from a creativity perspective. So a couple of uh, key last points. Uh, my belief is there's no such thing as failure. There's only ever feedback. And sometimes that feedback can be really brutal when we maybe don't do things so well or it doesn't turn out the way that we want to. But really critical in that some of the most amazing um, solutions, innovations, creative things that have uh, you know, occurred in our world have be been because, like the bottom photo, is that somebody has tried and not been successful multiple times. But most important is that they're taking the learning from that. So that what, that's what I've actually seen in creativity and creative thinking is that it's testing those things out and, and understanding that even if it doesn't work, what, what did work well, what didn't? What was it about that? How do I take an aspect of that and connect it to the next thing? And that, as it says up there, creativity requires the courage to let go of certainty, that you're not always going to have the right answer. Part of uh, this particular approach is exploring what any answer could actually be. And there's a lot of um, processes, books, resources out there that can guide you through those type of um, habits, creative habits in that way, till you find and make your own. So the last, uh, last slide is that uh, build it and they will come. Any ideas what movie is that from? Or maybe people are too young in the audience. Field of Dreams, if you haven't seen it, great baseball movie, Kevin Costner. So in this instance, thinking about if you create the space, not only for other people, if you're, if you're an educator or a manager, but for yourself, if you create the space for yourself to be creative, then you're, you're taking that first step towards being creative. And it is contagious, so pass it on. Thank you very much. <laughs>